Okay, students. So in this second part, now what I'm doing, I'm going to show you some of the schematic illustrations, which are there for uh, the binder jetting process. So as you have seen in the previous uh, slide, we were talking about that the print head can move on the bed in the ZY configurations. This is very similar to what you have seen previously in the other processes uh, where the bed is capable to move, uh, where the, uh, the print head is able to move in X, Y plane. And then the uh, height wise motion, which is around Z axis, it is facilitated through the bed itself. So if you check, for example, the inkjet print head is shown here where the deposition of binder droplets are shown in the schematic illustration. This print head can move technically in the X, Y positioning system. Uh, on this side, you will see that there would be a powder spreader. So this powder spreader is the one that is taking the powder from the powder chamber and it is spreading it, spreading the layer of powder. Uh, and that repeats uh, while the object, this is the object, the part being built. Uh, here you know that it is the powder, uh, the, uh, the, sorry, the binder droplets, they are selectively uh, binding the material, right? Based on their adhesive nature, they are joining the powder. And uh, the part looks like this, whereas the other part where binder is not applied, it will be unused powder. Here, this is very important to understand that generally in this process, there is no heat involved during the printing process. So as a result of this thing, the powder that is unused, uh, it, it doesn't change the property. So as a result of this thing, the quality of the powder that is not used is very similar to the fresh one. And uh, this is also attributed as one of the advantage uh, for the binder jet process. And if you see further, this is the build platform. Build platform is again the print bed. Uh, here it is associated with the, the height-wise movement, Z movement here. So uh, as the part is moved, then for the other layer, uh, powder spreader will spread another layer and this uh, print bed or build platform will move one step down, will index one step down. So the process is very much similar to what you have seen in the previous uh, processes, but uh, the only thing is that the material is coming in the form of uh, uh, powder. However, the, it is binded through the print head. So this is one thing, another uh, schematic illustration, more or less uh, explaining the same process. So uh, if I go step by step, Binder jetting is that the powder material is spread over the build platform using a roller. The print head deposits the uh, binder adhesive on the top of the powder wherever it's required. So it's kind of selective in nature. And the build platform is lower by the model's layer thickness. So whatever model layer thickness, whatever layer thickness you have involved, uh, the build platform will index down as a result of this thing. And then another layer of powder is spread over the previous layer. The object is uh, formed when the powder is bound to the liquid. Unbound particle rem uh, powder remains in position surrounding the object. The process is repeated until the entire object is made. So this is pretty much same what I have explained to you in the previous schematic diagram. Uh, here I am showing you these diagrams taken from the different sources. So uh, you can see, you can easily understand the process. There is one more very good illustrative uh, figure showing the uh, the steps involved in the binder jetting. So here in the first step, you can see that in this is the build uh, area, build bed, the powder is available here. So roller is going to spread the first layer of powder here, which is spreading first layer. Then after that, uh, this in build uh, uh, bed, uh, the print head will come, it will uh, deposit the binder in the liquid form and it will selectively bind the uh, the powder material. Then as after that, another layer of uh, 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 powder particles will be spread through the roller and then the process will carry on till the whole object is created. So if you see that this is the whole object which is created, uh, then uh, once this bar, this is built, what would happen? It will be taken outside. The build area will be taken outside. Curing binder and a curing will be attained in the bind in the in the over or oven, which is at higher temperature. After that, uh, uh, the debinding will happen, which means that the removing of the extra powder that is available here, that powder will be removed.
only the part will stay. Uh, this is a very delicate process and uh, uh, generally there, there are chances of damage basically that the part can get damaged if uh, care is not taken uh, properly. Uh, after that, what happens that since there are binders and additives also present uh, uh, there in the print, so uh, then this part will be left inside the furnace. Uh, this is centering furnace and centering furnace will fuse the uh, powder particle together. Uh, it will form the solid part, uh, dense part, and uh, the binder that was uh, putting the part powder particle together, that will either evaporate or it will drain out uh, from the uh, from the material itself from the pores so that process itself is referred as uh, infiltration this is the last kind of process that happens during the centering uh, process so uh, these this is another uh, con another schematic illustration which is showing the binder jetting process uh, students uh, after that, if I go to the next stage, uh, so as I told you that there are different types of binders which are involved. Uh, these binders could be, uh, if we are dealing with metals, so these are generally the organic solvents uh, with dissolved polymers or waxes. So these are generally the polymer or the wax materials which are there. These burn out during the post-processing centering to leave behind a strong metal. So they generally burn when you put them on the sintering process and only powder particles will center together. When we are dealing with plastics as a material, uh, thermoplastics like wax or fugitive polymers, these are generally uh, used as the binding agent. They generally melt or vaporize during the post-processing stage and create a permanent bond between the powder particles. If I'm dealing with the sand-based materials, in organic binders like water-based solutions with dissolved salt or sugar in it, uh, these hardens or cure at the room temperature or with low heat to bind the sand particles. Then if I talk about the ceramic materials, organic or inorganic binders similar to the metals, uh, some organic binders burn out during the high temperature. So again, there are different choices of uh, organic and inorganic binders when we are dealing with ceramics and if you look into the literature, it's not mentioned the names here, but if you look at the literature, you can easily find different research papers which are talking about these binders and some of them even studying uh, these as well. So uh, this was the idea of binding agent. Uh, now, if I move to the next slide. Uh, again, uh, how this process is different. So this is important to understand that we have a different wide range of uh, 3D printing methods, right? So uh, what are the pro and cons of different uh, methods and how binder jetting is uh, is unique, you can say that. So if I talk about uh, binder jetting is renowned among additive manufacturing methods, especially for its high volume output. So this is a bit faster process and uh, the volumetric output rate is very high in this case. Uh, among the edit other additive manufacturing technologies, it all it's also the most similar to the traditional paper printing and its simple approach and speed. The binder functions like ink as it moves across the layer of powder, which like paper forms the final product. By contrast, many other forms of 3D printing build parts with a single point, uh, often a laser or a nozzle that extrudes, melts or welds material together. Right, such processes require significantly more material and time to draw out each part with a single point layer by layer. Uh, if I talk about the 3D printing straight from the CAD file enables foundries to eliminate months long lead time and high cost of traditional patterns. So this binder jetting process can be used in fact to uh, uh, for the foundry applications where, you know, sand molds are prepared and these sand molds are generally very intricate because sometimes they, you need to design cores in it, right? So the process of binder jetting can be used to print the cores, to print the molds, and then later on use it in the foundry application. Uh, so these are, uh, this is one of the advantage. The design freedom of additive manufacturing also allows designer to innovate the part made by the 
reliable casting process, create complex consolidated geometries that enable lightweight, optimized part performance not possible with traditional processes. So as a result of this thing, students, you can create the casting processes, you can create the mold, uh, the mold for the casting process and the outcome of the casting process is more reliable. You can go for even more intricate shapes, a more consolidated geometries with a lot of intricate features in it, for example. At the same time, you can enable light being lightweight as well. You can optimize the performance because you have uh, the opportunity where you can uh, design the mold itself, even a complex one as well, right? Because of its high speed and the material flexibility, binders that stand alone among 3D printing methods as the technology that could transform traditional high volume manufacturing and bring the design cost and sustainability advantages to the 3D printing uh, to the masses. So these are some of the traits, you can say that, uh, which are there related to the binder jetting process and how it is different from the existing uh, other methodologies. Uh, 